So guys, this is just for your concern. Guys, this is for your concern that I have started recording of this session. And this video will be shared via YouTube to, with all of you. And this will be the last video of this session, which will be shared with all. Okay, so let me set the agenda for this particular session first, like what we are going to discuss within this particular session. So guys, the agenda here is, uh, this is going to be a particular course content for us, like what we are going to discuss. Obviously, there will be some subcategories of it, what we are supposed to discuss later on. Let us say Linux basics. So what is covered under here? This is just a topic, but we are going to discuss multiple things inside it. Accessing command line, we are going to discuss. Then after understanding of command line syntax, what are the advantages? When we execute a command, what are the things we need to take care of? Then after, if you are stuck somewhere and you need to take help in Linux environment, let us say you are not aware of like what is the right syntax of executing this command? How can you do that? So that sort of thing for sure we are going to discuss. Moreover, Linux file systems, ext2, 3, 4, and XFS. Whenever there will be requirement to format any file system, file, like uh, formatting means when you need to create a file system on the top of a, like this. So what kind of, of like uh, file system you are supposed to create? That kind of stuff we are going to discuss here. Then after we will be discussing about user management, like what are the different type of users we have? Like what is system user? Why do we use it? How do we create custom user, custom groups? How do we manipulate these users and groups? How do we assign individual users a specific permission set? So that kind of things we, are, we will be discussing. Then after package management. So we will not only discuss about like how to install package, but we will discuss about that if any package is installed and that package has some sort of vulnerability, so how to fix that vulnerability, how to patch that particular package with the help of RPM as well as with DM command. Then after server patching and verification, we will do, let us say if there is some governance organization which needs to have a report that yes, everything is patched properly. So how will you do that? How will you fetch the information about all the packages which are installed in a server? So when these were installed last, so that kind of thing we will discuss about. We will go for swap management. Swap is a virtual memory concept. When we allocate our disk as memory to the server for ensuring that if there is sudden spike in memory utilization, so our server should not go down. And instead of that, our, our system, our server, our computer should start using that particular part allocated as memory for ensuring that it will not go down. Then after disk management, we will discuss about like, uh, how many disks can we associate? How to format it? How many partition can we create? What is LVM? What is physical volume? What is volume group? How do we manage physical volumes, logical volumes, volume groups, and so on and so forth. And rest of the content is just before you guys. I have already shared it with you. So these are the particular things which we are going to discuss within this particular session. So without wasting any more time, so let us begin with Linux basics today. If you guys have any questions, so please do ask. Any questions, guys? Sir, are we going to learn any shell scripting kind of thing? Yes, for sure. Basic shell scripting, I'll be telling you, like how do we, so when we talk about like this, this particular section, like use of sad, or grab, grab, like grab, cut, find, locate command. So we will not only use this command as individual, but yes, I'll be telling you that how to put all these command in a particular file in order to write a shell script. Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, along with this course, uh, are we going to discuss some of the troubleshooting issues? Yeah, for sure. So as we write here, like network setup and troubleshooting, so troubleshooting will be with each and every single section. Like what sort of issues do we face with SSH? What sort of issue do we face with HTTP, NFS? So whenever I'll tell, you know, like any of, the, any of these services, I will be telling you like how to start troubleshooting. Yeah, thanks, sir. Yeah. So there will be no additional section for troubleshooting, but yes, whenever we will discuss these kind of topics, so we will include troubleshooting section as well. Like if there is any particular component when we need to uh, like configure anything, so at that moment we will start. We will go for troubleshooting section as well for the same. 
yes yeah got it yeah great so okay guys now let us uh, begin with this particular section so first of all in order to do practice because see, there are two things first of all having knowledge of theory and second thing here is having practical knowledge of anything so for theory obviously we are going to go for this particular session but when we talk about practical so guys practicals are a must first of all we will see how to create ec2 machine now guys this is my aws account and console of ec2 ec2 stands for elastic cloud compute we can create virtual machines here right guys we can create virtual machines here and with the help of these machines we are going to do practice as much as possible and guys keep one more thing in mind do not think that yes we have executed this command and you have understood the syntax keep on practicing as much as possible because at the time of real troubleshooting you should not be thinking of the commands so there is no instance running this is ireland reason i'll go to mumbai from this particular section we can change the reason guys as long as you guys are going to practice so only do practice in mumbai reason only otherwise let us say today you created one instance in ireland next day in ohio the next day in sydney next day in oregon so it might be possible that you may end up paying unwanted charges to aws right guys so please keep this thing in mind that whenever we are going to work with this kind of components so select only one reason so in order to practice linux operating system we are going to create one ec2 machine on the top of aws one instance is running here the instance which we created yesterday so that is in stopped state right now we can start it or if you want i can terminate and i, and I can create new one as well so let us create new so as we we will have some more practice about it okay sir launch click on the launch instance give it a name whatever name you feel good i prefer to give linux box now the very next section here is this is just a name i can define linux box and i can i can uh, like uh, pick the particular operating system of windows this is just a naming convention nothing else now we are going to select red hat as soon as we select this particular image some descriptions are given below here like red hat enterprise linux 9 so we are going to work with rhl 9 this is the latest operating system available in market now this is hvm hvm stands for hardware assisted virtualization machine then after ssd solid state disk volume type we are going to have with this this is the ami id this is verified by provider provider here is red hat if you want to browse more images you can search here based on your requirement now guys keep this thing in mind this is t2 micro and this is free tier eligible free tier eligible means like if you run this particular machine aws will not charge you anything for one calendar year from the date of your account creation account means your aws account creation aws will not charge you anything but you need to pick a machine which comes under free tier eligible now there are three ways to log into an operating system guys first of all you can use a username and a password but since we have selected a particular ami which is provided from the side of vendor we do not have any information like what has already happened inside this particular machine so we do not know the username and the password that is why we are supposed to create one key pair key pair means like login key pair we need to create in order to log into that machine so there will be a user by default created inside this operating system and the particular key pair which we are going to create right now so this private key pair we will have and aws will ensure to copy the public key pair inside that user home directory inside there is a file i'll tell you that because we are definitely going to work with that file third thing here is there is no need to create a new user if there is a user already created and you have pasted your laptop key inside that operating system that is custom image which we can create going forward if required 
So in that particular case, no need to create any key pair. We can proceed without key pair. Right, guys? So these are three ways. Either we can, we may already know the particular username and password, or our key is already placed inside operating system's image, or we can create a new key pair. So for now, as we do not have like previous two conditions being met, so we will have to create a particular new key pair here, or we will have to select existing key pair here. So Linux hyphen batch is the key pair which I have access to. That key pair I have used yesterday itself. So I know where is the particular key placed. Moreover, guys, network settings. So there might be multiple VPCs. Now, what is this, this VPC? So guys, VPC stands for virtual private cloud. This is known as virtual private cloud. Now, we can select any of the VPC. Now, there is a particular component known as subnet. Guys, these subnets are equal to a data center. Keep this thing in mind. These subnets are equal to a data center. So the particular kind of machine which we have selected here, which is known as T2.micro, T2.micro, this particular machine is available within only two available regions, either AP South 1A or B. If you select 1C, this particular machine will not be created. This is a restriction from the side of AWS. Why I'm telling you this? Because unknowingly or knowingly, you might select this particular uh, availability zone or this particular subnet, which is known as AP South 1C, and you may end up getting some failure message that you are not able to launch the machine. So you need not to worry about it that you are doing something wrong. You need to focus on this particular segment that you might have selected AP South 1C as availability zone in order to create the machine. So do not select this one. So either you can go with AP South 1, AP stands for Asia Pacific. AP means Asia Pacific, South 1 means Mumbai. A is the particular available design, like data center, you can call that. There are three data centers in Mumbai region. So we are going to select this one. Now, auto send public IP address. This, uh, this setting is by default enabled. Using this public IP address only, we will log into this machine. If we disable this, then we will not be able to do anything with this machine because we can access any machine created inside AWS only with the help of public IP address for now. Later on, whenever we do AWS practice and we do, we, we do set up AWS tunnel and all. So in that case, we can access the machines created inside AWS on private IP address as well on the, with the help of VPN tunnel. Right now, firewall rules, we will select it. So once again, I'm going to select the default VPC, rule, uh, like default VPC security group here. 10 GB is the particular size of disk which is associated by this machine with this machine. So I'm going to do with that and hit next. Launch machine. So we are successful to create this machine. Any questions so far, guys, with this machine creation? Sir, I have a question regarding key pair. Yes. If we create new one, that uh, old one is will work or not? So whatever key pair, either you create new or you select existing one, that will work. Okay. But keep this thing in mind, you need to have access to old key pairs as well. Like, let us say if you're going to select old key pair, then you need to have access to it. If you do not have access, create new key pair. Okay, sir. Yes, because that will definitely happen. If you do not have access to old key pair and you have selected with the machine, AWS would not allow you to log in. Moreover, guys, keep one more thing in mind. If the key is lost once, you will not be able to re-download it again from the AWS console. That is a restriction from the side of AWS. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so this is my Linux box created. I'll select it. Guys, as soon as I will select this particular option, so the particular connect option will be enabled for me. I'll hit connect. There are a couple of options available. Like, first of all, EC2 instance connect. If I click here, it will ask me to connect. And uh, there is a note written. In most cases, the default user name is EC2 is correct. However, Read your AMI uses instruction to check if the AMI owner has changed the default image username, right? Hit connect. 
let us see what happens here this either this may take some time or this does not allow you to log in because very limited operating systems are there where this particular feature is enabled in most of cases if you select the ami as amazon linux image only then this particular system is allowed so for now we are going to do ssh and guys yes these are the instructions which you need to follow in order to log into aws machine and what are the instructions first of all open your ssh client locate your private key file the key used to launch this instance is linux batch.pem this is the name of that particular key file which we downloaded or which we selected now run this particular command ch mode 400 guys sometimes what happens if the permission of this file is not equal to this particular like 400 what does this mean 400 read permission and that is true for the owner of the file rest all are not supposed to have any kind of access onto this particular file because this is a private key file being used to access this particular machine anyone on the operating system is not supposed to access this key file all right guys so whoever is going to access remote operating system with the help of this key file should have a separate copy of it and should have this particular permission only then linux operating system will allow you to access this particular key otherwise you will get error that key are to open if you want i can show you that right away so guys what are the permission right now 666 it means everyone has every kind of permission on this particular file read write read write read write for all for owner user and group those who are new to linux operating system not to worry about i will be explaining each and everything of this for this permission set so if i paste that command here so see what sort of error message we are going to get so obviously first of all it will ask me to provide my trust in order to connect to this particular server that if i really want to connect with this particular server if i want to establish my connectivity i will say yes see warning what does that mean guys permission 666 for linux batch linux hyphen batch dot pem are to open it requires that though your private key file should not accessible by others it means at least i will have to define 660 permission on this particular file like other should not be able to do anything with this particular file that is why aws has mentioned this example command that copy it and execute it in order to log in this log in with this particular server so guys in interview there is one most of the like most common question which is asked okay what kind of issues have you faced while doing ssh into linux operating system so what is the very first problem here is guys if you are trying to access a linux machine so it could also be a possible reason that your keys which you are using to access linux operating system like a remote server so keys are to open or the permission on the your key file your private keys are not correct moreover second second problem here could be let us say the name of the particular key is not right you are typing manually let us say this will not work like this are these particular keys are not accessible reason being the particular key file name is not right moreover the user name which you are trying to write is misspelled like username may not be right next the particular port number which you are trying to connect on a remote server the port number may not be opened if you go to if you go back to a machine select your box go to security and see right now all the port numbers are opened all traffic is opened 
So for example, if we modify and we block that port number 22 should not be allowed from anywhere. So that can also be a reason that we shall not be able to log into this remote server. For now, I am not going to modify this because obviously we would like to do SSH into that machine, right? But yes, there can also be a particular problem. One more thing here is sometimes what happens that the particular host name which you are trying to access, this particular terminal may give you an error that the, use, that the host name is not known. You will copy the command from here, like you will hit on connect button. You will try to copy this example command and you will paste it here. Everything is fine, but there could be one more reason that you are trying to access this machine with the help of some domain name, like EC2-13-233-200- something, something, right? So sometimes this may also be a problem that DNS is not going to resolve this domain name as soon as you copy and you try to log into it. So you, it may take at least 15 minutes as well sometimes in order to resolve this domain name. So you may have to wait. Now, what is the solution of it? So rather than defining this domain name in order to log into that server, what you can do here is you will go back to your instance and you will copy this public IP address instead of that particular host name. So what is supposed to be done? Go at end of this particular line, remove this particular name and define the IP address. So that can also be a problem that if you are trying to access your remote machine using some DNS name, using some FQDN, FQDN stands for fully qualified domain name. So that can also be a problem while doing SSH to your remote machine. Are we clear with that guys? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? Any questions guys? No, sir. Okay. So I'm logged into this particular machine. So yeah, someone is asking here, like, how do they log into machine? Like uh, after SSH connection between server, all servers running suddenly SSH throwing error as connection failed. What is the error? So yes, in this particular case, let us say uh, when we try to do SSH. So the reason here is, for example, if someone might have enabled, there is a particular term known as TCP wrapper. Let me show you that. This is just to answer this question. Otherwise, we are supposed to discuss this later on as well. If you do not get like, how does it work? What are the particular things are happening? So need not to worry about because obviously I will be explaining this later on as well. Okay. So first of all, there is a command guys, which you will have to use every single time sudo su hyphen. There is a command known as sudo su hyphen. Right now, whenever we log into this operating system, guys, so there is a particular like uh, stuff which is written. First of all, this is the username which we have used to log into this operating system ec2 dash user at the rate. What is the host name? Over here, this is the host name of this machine, right? This is a tilde symbol, like on the top of tab, the tab button which you have on your laptop, desktop, or wherever. So on the top of tab, there is a particular button known as tilde, right? So this is tilde. This is known as home directory of the user. This particular symbol represents home directory of the user. It could be different folder in different users. It could be different folder in case of different users. In order to identify that where you are right now, you can read it with the help of PWD command. PWD means print working directory, wherever you are right now. So it is going to print that particular folder slash home slash EC2 user. Then after dollar, so guys, there will be there. You will be able to see two components here, two symbols here. Either it is dollar sign or it is going to be hash pound symbol, either dollar or pound, or you can call it hash, right? What, the, what is the difference here? So guys, if you are logged in with a normal user, which is not super user, so super user is known as root in Linux operating system. 
as in case of windows we have administrator the same way we have root in case of linux environment are we clear with that guys yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. if sir, it is sir. dollar it is normal user if it is hash it means we are logged in with root user so with the help of this icon whenever you are going to execute any command so in that case you will be able to understand that whether you are executing a, executing a command with the help of root user or normal user sudo su hyphen switch user to super user now let us say if there is any other user created and i would like to switch with that user i will run a command sudo su hyphen let us say tom if user tom is available on the server then obviously this command will take me to tom user but obviously as you can see the message user tom does not exist or the user entry does not contain all the required fields are we clear with that guys okay so first yes, of all let us set a host name so guys host name is nothing but a particular name which is given to this particular computer there is a command known as host name very simple the host is look this computer and name means the name as we all have some or the other name given right so let us say if i want to change this host name how will i do it the write the command host name and after that the name linux box see it is saying the particular message you must be root to change the host name so let us become root once again su sudo super user do su hyphen and guys what is the relevance of placing this hyphen over here so if we place this hyphen or this dash it means this will take me to user's home directory in case of ec2 user what was the home directory guys slash home slash ec2 user in case of root this is slash root but this still button remains same in case of all the both the users ec2 as well as root but if i log out okay let us change host name first now guys this host name is changed on temporary basis if you see here host name is changed like root at the rate linux dash box and this is still it means this represents that a user is working in home directory log out remove this particular hyphen now guys what would happen anyone has an idea about it it goes to root fantastic it goes to root but home directory does not change it goes to root within current directory of your previous user what was the current working directory of your previous user slash home slash ec2 user if i type in the command pwd it remains in the same it does not switch to its own own home directory so that hyphen is the particular provider of home directory of next upcoming user which you are trying to switch with clear yes sir so which, what does that mean like if you place this hyphen this will not only switch your user with root but it will take your root user to its home directory clear guys yes clear sir okay fine so guys let me tell you a uh, couple of basic things about linux operating system so guys first of all it is to be understood that linux is a open source operating system linux is known as open source operating system you guys can read any and every file of linux operating system if you know the right tooling if you know the right tools you can open any file available on the linux operating system second thing this particular operating system unlike windows operating system that there are two versions of windows like either it is server side or it is client side for example windows 7 windows 7 is a client side operating system for example windows 8 or 10 these are client side operating system so there are different licensing cost for for like client side for client version or maybe for server edition 
right? But in case of Linux operating system, depending on the software installed in the operating system, that particular stuff is considered as a, whether it is working as a client or as a server. There is no bifurcation. There is no isolation at the level or level of operating system that this particular so, so OS is going to work as a server or as a client. Same image can be used in order to configure a desktop version of it or in order to configure a server version of it. The major difference which Red Hat brings with itself, that is that if you are trying to install a server, so we are not supposed to install kind of GUI version of it on operating system. Guys, just give me a second. Yes, guys. So yes, I was telling that uh, there is only one operating system using which either we can use that operating system as a client or as a server. That completely depends on us, that how we are going to utilize it. Okay. Now, when we are going to work with production environment, so guys, the rest assured, not even a single person is going to get some GUI installed there not even a single person 99.999 percent servers will be made available to you with cli cli stands for guys command line interface as we see this particular we cannot copy and paste here anything we cannot click anything here for example if we need to create a folder there is no option coming in and, and especially these kind of options are coming just because that i'm using mac operating system and these are these are the particular features provided by a Mac terminal only. Otherwise, like I cannot create a folder, I cannot copy anything from here, I cannot uh, like cop, cut paste here, I cannot do anything. Everything will be done with the help of some command. <laughs> Guys, please mute yourself if you are not speaking. Otherwise, that will bring some echo in, in the system. Okay, not a problem. Good. So, guys, first of all, we need to understand that what is the information of this operating system where you have logged in so what kind of information do you need about the operating system okay uh, please explain gui gui stands for graphical user interface which you are never going to see in any production environment because within my last career within my career i have never worked on gui in production environment so gui stands for graphical user interface which is not available in any production environment. We have to work only with CLI. CLI stands for command line interface. Okay, so guys, first of all, what are the particular things which we should know about that? First of all, what is the particular time? So there is a command on its date. Date command will print you some information about the particular time. Like today is Sunday, right? This is Jan 15th. And this is the time of this particular operating system. This is AM. What is the time zone? UTC, universal time clock. What is the year here? 2023. This is the information of this particular system. Okay. So for Windows, yes, the question is quite valid. Someone is asking that, okay, what tool we need to use if we are going to practice with Windows operating system. And you need to have a look and feel of Mac operating system or maybe with Linux operating system. What tool are we going to use? So guys, the tool name is Git Bash. Go to internet as I have gone to. Just click on very first link. Download Git SCM. SCM stands for guys source code, source code management. Download this particular tool. Now there are three options coming in based on your available operating system, either for Mac, for Windows and for Linux or Unix, you can download it. So click on Windows. There will be two separate options coming in. Either you can like a standalone installer for 62-bit or 64-bit based on your operating system. Now this is portable. 
so for example if you do not have right to install operating any software in your operating system in that case you can place the executable binary on your desktop and you can double click it that will get executed without being installed on your operating system but yes guys there will be a problem that all the history of your executed command will not be maintained by this portable uh, software you can use this particular software like this one 64 bit gate for windows setup you can use this one and this will provide you the same interface you can change the color of it this is going to provide you an entire setup of linux operating system environment based on which you will be able to execute the same commands after logging to your operating system so guys this particular environment is going to provide you kind of operating system kind of environment where you can do ssh into your remote operating system so there is no need to use putty but those guys who are already familiar with it i would not say that they, they are not supposed to use putty they can use any software in order to log into their remote server once they log in so either it is mac terminal or it is your windows git bash or it is your ubuntu terminal so all the terminals are going to be a medium to establish a connection from your local system to your remote server are we clear with that guys yes. yeah. kumar are we clear with that great okay so first of all we are supposed to know about the date then after this is the date command for example if you need to understand okay i have logged into this particular system what operating system is it for example linux are there are different version of linux let us say it is ubuntu it is debian mandriva flip uh, like Fedora, Suze, Nopix, Red Hat, CentOS, multiple operating systems are there. Even Amazon Linux is there. So first of all, we need to understand that what operating system it is. This is Linux. It is clearly visible after running the date command. But what operating system it is? So guys, you can make a note of this particular file whenever you need to know about the operating system. There is a particular file. Cat is the particular command because see. We cannot double click and open a file unlike Windows here. So we have to read up, we have to execute a command in order to understand that what is the content of a file. In order to read a file, we are supposed to execute cat command. Just make a note of it. Cat command is used for concatenation. It means to read the output of a file or to read the content of a file, we use cat command. And the file here is slash etc slash os desk release just for now just understand like etc is something where editable etc stands for guys editable text configuration so far whether you are working as a linux administrator linux architect or maybe like you are working like linux god so you will have to always work with this etc only this particular folder is never going to uh, leave from your life this will definitely become like a very important part of your Linux administrator life. ETC stands for Editable Text Configuration. Whatever software you are going to install in Linux operating system, so 99.5% chance will be there that the configuration file of that software will be found inside this particular folder only. So yes, guys, let us execute it. Now, it has printed the information, whatever was written inside this particular file. Right? So, guys, whenever we try to access Linux command line, so there are three components of it. There, there are majorly three components of it. First of all, the command. This is the particular command like the utility which we are going to use in order to read output of this particular file. And this particular file is known as argument. This is command and this is argument. Now, let us say if I want to enhance the particular utility of this particular file, this particular command, so I can place some kind of options as well. Okay, guys, let, let just tell me one thing. How many lines are there inside this file? Yes, guys, how many lines are there inside this particular file? Is there anyone who can count it? 
18 18 every single line can be printed okay see tell me one thing that why do i need to put a brain for doing those small tasks which this computer can do automatically so while printing this particular command this particular files output we can add an option this is known as option here either you can call it a switch or you can call it option so this is how this command becomes begins becomes complete so there are three components of a particular command which we can execute there are three like uh, parameters of a command first of all it is known as command like cat is the command itself hyphen n is the option and etc os hyphen release is the particular argument what are these first of all it is command this is option and this is argument. argument. Now, guys, based on different command, there can be different number of arguments. For example, there is another file, etc issue, right? So we can place multiple arguments with the same command based on recommend. For example, I did not want to read only one file. I wanted to read multiple files here. So after a space, I can specify another argument here. And guys, keep this thing in mind whenever we are supposed to write a command on Linux terminal. So we have to specify one space. For example, if I do not specify this space here, no space and over here, no space. So what would happen guys? Will it work? No. no. Add hyphen n. So Linux operating system will assume that this is an entire one command. We are trying to such a command which is cat dash n. So over here we will have to define that there has to be space in between. Okay. Now, no such file or directory. Why it is so? Because there are two different files like etc os dash release is one file, etc issue is two is another file. So guys, keep this thing in mind. We have to ensure that we are going to place one space in between. Right. Whenever we are defining a command, it's option and the argument or maybe arguments. So we have to specify one, one white space or maybe it could be more than one as well. That doesn't make a difference. But yes, at least one space, one space we have to specify. Uh, can you put a semicolon between argument? Like this you are talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. So listen, if you put a semicolon here, so the particular command, the first command is broken here. See, slash etc issue permission denied. What, what does it mean? Like my Linux operating system consider that you are trying to execute some another command here rather than defining this particular as argument. After the semicolon, the another particular line or word or command is treated as separate. So what I can do here is, so for example, I wanted to run a command known as date. That command will work here. So if you place a semicolon in between arguments, so after your first semicolon, next particular written word will be considered as a separate command, not as an argument. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, once again, if we want to go for... What about some operators maybe, like in between the commands? Uh, what what kind of operators you are talking about? I mean, logical or AND operator so that we can use. So we will come on to that later on. For now, we are trying to understand the basic syntax of it. Okay. So for semicolon, I got it. Yeah. I thought, I don't know about Linux. So, so I thought maybe AND, okay. Got it, got it. Yeah. So let us, okay. Let me tell you, tell you that as well. So let us say if you press AND operator here, right? Just for your information, I'm telling you guys, and for rest as well, if you want to like make a note of it, then do it. Otherwise, later on, for sure, uh, by, by default, we are going to discuss about it. This end operator. What does it do? For example, there is a particular file or there is a command which is supposed to execute at least for half an hour. For example, you are trying to run some process or maybe you are trying to copy a file from one location to another and you want that command should work, continue to work 
but you want your terminal to be free. So you can place the, this ampersand operator or this end operator here. So the command will work in background because this command did not really take long time. So it, it says done cat hyphen this particular output is already printed and the command is done. So in order to run a command in background, this command will let your terminal free. For example, this was supposed to take maybe 30 minutes. So why would you wait? Just reading your blank screen or maybe like, like getting an operation performed in your front end. When you know that you have right a exact command which is supposed to be executed. So you would like your terminal to be free. So you can place this ampersand at the end of this particular command at last of this particular line. And that is it. It will start running the command inside background. Like if you, we are taking TCP dump output, uh, we can use here. Yes, yes, yes. So if any long running command is supposed to be executed. So in that particular case, you can place this ampersand and moreover, your terminal will be free. Then after you will be able to use this terminal as you were using it before. Now, one more thing, guys, there is one interview question, which, uh, which you can make a note of it. So let us say, uh, based on this particular question I'm telling, so let us say that I have executed couple of commands in past. I have executed couple of commands in past, which were supposed to be running in background, right? So if I need to know that how many commands are running in background, how will you check? Uh, through history, sir. Uh, history. Uh, PS command, sir. PS hyphen F. History command, sir. History command, sir. So, okay. Let us say if I run history command, yes, I, right? I appreciate your point. So I executed these two commands, and you will say, okay, one command and second command. Two commands are, uh, should be running in history, right? Based on this particular history. Okay. Kumar is saying PS hyphen AUX. So Kumar and others, keep this thing in mind, but guys, that history and your PS hyphen AUX commands are going to only tell that this command was executed. Is still is it, is it running or not? This is not the responsible command for that. So command to check the of the jobs which are running in background is jobs. There is a command in Linux operating system known as jobs, which tells about the commands which are running in background. Okay. For example, there's a particular editor uh, like uh, VI editor. I opened a file like ETC issue. I opened this particular, forget about it. What is Vim? I sent this particular in background control, like control and Z. There is a particular job which is running in background. And this job is stopped basically like I have sent this particular command in background and this is in stopped mode. This is not running. Okay. I executed a command ping eight ping hyphen C let us say 1000. Like I want to ping 1000 times C for count. So if you see this output just for sample purpose, I have executed it. So one job is stopped and one is running. Do you see the difference guys? Yes. Just hit enter your terminal is free, but because output of that particular command is coming every single second. So that is why it is printing like this. Now what I'm supposed to do, I'll run a command FG. So as soon as I run this particular command FG, so this will bring the particular command into front end mode and FG command. Once again, I will run. This will bring another command into front end mode FG FG command for foreground. FG for foreground. Like if I run the command once again, so both the like jobs have been terminated. And if you see the history, so I executed first of all, like uh, FG commands. And then this particular VI command was uh, brought into front, uh, like foreground. I say, I, I just uh, killed it. Then after another time I executed FG command once again, that particular ping command brought into foreground and I killed it. 
ओके एफ जी हेल्प टू किल द जॉब व्हिच इज रनिंग इन बैकग्राउंड राइट सो नॉट हेल्प टू किल द जॉब बट टू ब्रिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर जॉब इन फोरग्राउंड ओके like on to this particular terminal you whatever you want you can do that either you can you want to see the output on terminal you can do that or if you want to terminate it you want to set it uh, you want to change the priority of it like whatever you want you can do with the command clear guys so this is an interview question which you need to keep in mind like how will you check jobs running in background so the command here is jobs okay sir sir one second sir please sir one second sir yeah please do you have any question sir how to, job command how to use sir okay so let us say vi is the editor i open any file let us say it is she uh, host name i press control z the command is sent to background command is stopped now i want to know if there is any command which is running in background i can type here jobs command it will tell me there is a particular process which is running in stopped state and in background moreover ping hyphen c let us say 10 10 packets or 10 uh, 10 times i'm talking about 10 count so if i run a command jobs here so this is working in foreground i i'm not supposed to execute any command here right but what if i place this ampersand here this will bring the command into background and if i run the command jobs so it is telling one command is stopped one is another running so after 10 packets this particular command will be done so second command second job is done which is ping hyphen c there were two commands like first one is this this is job id this is this is second job id and guys if i need to bring let us say there are 10 jobs running so fg then after the particular job id to bring any command into foreground run once again and there is nothing left clear guys the use of uh, jobs command yes sir yes got it sir yeah yes yes sir got it sir okay now what next so guys i hope that we are very clear with this particular command then option then after the particular arguments so sometimes during interview a person may ask okay i want to print a file in such a way that no white space should be printed no white space means like this Yes, guys. How will you do it? No idea, sir. Okay, let's get an idea. So, guys, there is a particular command in Linux operating system in order to get help. whatever command you are working with there will be a man man means manual pages to understand the result of that particular command so there are a couple of option like hyphen capital a show all like whatever stuff is available inside a file that will print now if there are repetitive blanks in a file then it will squeeze or it will suppress it for example let us go back the particular file here is this is for test this is for adding new line this is for demo bye some or the other text we have written here if we define here cat command cat hyphen n it will print the line numbers including those those white spaces 
How many overall lines are here, guys? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Great. Now, if I want to suppress that repeated uh, wide spaces, this will try to ensure the readability of the particular text. It means all the repeated white spaces are truncated. So hyphen S option we can use either NS like cat hyphen NS or cat hyphen N space hyphen S. Like either we can use like this or we can use like this. So either like multiple arguments we can specify along with the same like back to back without specifying any space in between. Multiple arguments can be placed with the command without specifying any additional space. But yes, if we want to specify separately, then every time there will be a particular hyphen with option. Clear, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Sounds good. Now there will be one another question. Let us say, what if I want to remove this particular white space as well? Then what? I do not want to ensure that readability. See, during interview, a person will uh, ask you till that particular moment of time that the person would uh, like play with your mind. Let what is the at max length, at max capacity of your brain which you can use in order to perform the operation in in real time environment. Or a person will try to understand that what have you done so far? What sort of issues have you faced? What sort of requirement have you got so far? Right. So cat command has its own limitation. There will be another command on its set, which we will discuss later on. Not today for sure, because I really do not want you guys to be confused. Right now, I'm trying to tell you that either we can use multiple options with a single command. My intention here is not to tell you that how to, how to play with the files. My favorite editor here is VIM and I'm, I'm working with VI because I really do not want to tell you how to install additional packages in operating system. What my intention here is that you guys should become familiar with command line interface. Right guys. Okay. So cat hyphen n hyphen s either you can play it separately. You can place it separately or what you can do. You can place it with the same option like cat dash n s. Okay. Then after the file name, you can specify here. Fine. Okay. Now, once again, let's go back to man command. Why I'm telling you this man? What does man do? So there is a command on as man. So first of all, read the manual pages of man itself. Man, man. So right now, what is what will this command do? This command is going to print the manual pages for man command. Like how man command is going to be useful for you. Man means this is not human being. This is going to be manual pages for man command. Now, guys, whenever you will open any other command, so you will see like one, two, three, four, these sequences written there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These kind of options you will be able to see whenever you will open any command. Let me tell you how. What is written here, guys? One. One, great. Uh, what is written here, guys? Eight, I think. Yes, eight. Very true. In order to get out of it, guys, we press Q. Q for quit. What is written here? Eight. one so guys there will be different kind of process procedures and kind of uh, stuff available in operating system so these are either going to be part of so these are going to be some kind of parameters which you will have to define so first is going to be executable programs or cell commands wherever it will be written as one, it will be known as executable programs or shell commands. And guys, keep this thing in mind, these, these particular executables are available for everyone 
who has a right to execute any command on the operating system these commands will be executable by one and all number 2 if the particular numeric 2 is found so this will be known as system calls basically these particular calls and these particular functions and programs are used by kernel itself if it is written 3 the same thing so these are functions provided by the kernel and functions within the like program libraries for, for kernel use right for special files like slash dev dev is a special kind of file where all the devices information is found we will be discussing about what let me tell you that right away so next week we are supposed to discuss this if we type in ll here so there are like asf we have been boot dev efi etc home lib lib64 media mnt so these are some kind of mount points which are available within linux operating system so within next class we are supposed to discuss about the use cases of it like why do we use all these right guys so for now what we are trying to understand here is like what kind of components we are supposed to have a look at when we are going to work within linux environment okay so guys either it will be a file format or conventions like etc passwd for example you want to read the page, like main page of etc passwd you can you will write main etc passwd you will get to know like what kind of format is there moreover there are some kind of default games installed in linux operating system just to pass your time right so you can do that then after miscellaneous like it will include macro packages or like some conventions like main grow off then after your whenever it is written guys keep this thing in mind system administration command usually only for root now what does that mean usually it means you can assign some rights to normal user as well to execute these commands with the help of sudo you remember guys that we executed very first command of the operating system was sudo yes sir so with the help of that sudo command we can delegate some rights to some normal user in order to execute commands as a super user right so what kind of stuff we are going to see here so it is like these commands are especially used by like uh, system administrators especially by root user but if root wants can delegate some kind of privileges to normal user let us say a person cannot do everything that is why there are some different administrator for example there is a user known as tom so tom is supposed to execute all the commands which are related to disk management but tom will not be able to perform any operation related to user management now let us say there is a user known as ram so ram will be allowed to perform only uh, like user management will not be able to perform any operation related to file permission let us say there is a user let us say harry harry is responsible to manage all the stuff related to package management but will not be able to perform any operation related to software installation right so we can delegate some specific rights to specific people on the operating system along with some pseudo privileges which we know which we will learn in coming in coming sessions right okay so guys any question so far no sir like no, all sir. clear all clear sir great good to know okay. so right now we know that uh, why like why 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 it is required to like go for main pages and guys main pages are really going to be helpful for you in order to understand the utility of any command like main and cat for example equivalent to ve now what is ve we will learn later on v for showing non printing e what is this e equivalent to ve what is capital e displayed dollar at the end of each line like if you want to see like you you can understand like when the line is ending right sir you can understand okay this is the line and separator from your new line begins so guys whatever a command can do you can understand 
with the help of cat command all the available options are available here moreover if you would like to like uh, go for like cat hyphen f hyphen g so examples how you can read it where have like if you want to see some sort some sort of reported bugs if you want to like uh, see also tag so multiple other options are available here where from the reference can be taken so that sort of information is already available within the main pages itself you can read moreover if you do not want to go here just go over internet and type in main page for cat command man7.org the type in here all the information which was available there so same kind of information these uh, these guys have printed so this is just a particular page like a uh, website where you can read the particular information of that right guys clear yes, yes sir yes but yes, yes but yes keep one more thing in mind that it is not always necessary that you are going to see all the main pages available here because it might be possible that these guys whoever are the administrator of this particular might have created a particular html page maybe years back so couple of option might be like deprecated or might be added over here within the you like you use cases of these particular commands and you are trying to read it here so it is much better rather than relying on this particular website or maybe some other web sources so when you have the particular sources within your operating system itself then why to go out okay so guys first of all we have a particular command like a couple of commands which we need to learn today in order to be familiar with it first of all it is like cal cal for calendar sir could you please uh, run the command cat uh, cat I space hyphen s on slash etc issues. Okay. So if I'm I remove hyphen s from here, it is going to repeat multiple white lines. I yes. knowingly added just to show the example. I'm supposing that um, blank space should be removed actually. Okay, so for that, you need to use set command. Okay, no issue, sir. But I really do not want to go to set command because that is that is like that is a streamline editor that can do a lot of stuff. We will for sure learn that as well, but not today. So by default, the command works like this. If you want to print like this particular kind of like the number of lines before everything, so iPhone N you can add. If you want to let us suppress the white spaces, you can add like this. Then after, if you want to read multiple files, let us say it is ETC issue, ETC FS tab, so you can do that as well. Right, guys? So what I am trying to tell you here is, okay, how many editors are there in Linux? So see, like there, are, there are multiple. And by default, there are a couple of editors available. Like, first of all, it is, if there's an existing file, you can, uh, you can read with the help of cat command. So cat command is just, not the editor, but you can use this particular command to read content of it. Then after, there is a particular editor known as vi and vim and nano, then gedit. These are the particular most famous editors available in Linux operating system. But gedit works only in GUI environment. Let us say it is nano etc issue you can install it but later on we will we will see how to work with nano is not available here see rsc essay exam clearing that so you can clear rsc exam within a lot lesser than that the particular course content which we are going to cover within this but yes there will be some specific set of questions which comes into exam you need to visit some like uh, center where these guys are going to prepare, make you prepare for the RHC essay exam. So I'm not going to cover RHC essay or RHC E. I will help you to crack the job interview. Because the end of the day, the goal of this particular course is going to be to get a job. What if you have cleared RHC essay or RHC E and you are not able to answer the questions in your interview uh, during your interview? So will your RHCE help there? 
I guess no. No sir. No sir. So how see those guys who are teaching Linux, they are expert at teaching, but a person who has been teaching only for last ten to fifteen years does not have idea like how do people ask question during interview. Does not have idea about like what kind of real time issues occurs because see, until unless you are performing practical in labs, these are good. But when it comes to real time environment, have you ever seen that system is going hung? Have you ever seen in lab that system is running out of CPU? Have you ever seen that system is running out of disk space? Or no sir, memory is exhaustive use, or network uh, network is choked. See, within your lab, we always go for happy flows because there are some set of commands written which are supposed to be known by every Linux admin. But within this particular batch, I will not only be teaching, but I'll be sharing my past experience with you guys. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. So I will not commit that you guys will be able to clear RHC SA or RHC E. For that, you will need to do some additional practices, right? But yes, I can ensure that after completion of this particular course, you shall be able to show at least three years of experience within your interview. Those guys who have more than, let us say, five or eight years. So you guys will be able to prove that, yes, you know how to, how to handle a team. For example, I shall not only be telling you, okay, that if there is a critical issue going on, that only your L1 or L2 are supposed to work. What will be your responsibility? How will you initiate? Let us say if you have corporate help available. So in what use cases will you be raising ticket to the, the particular partner, the OEM, the particular vendor who, who provides you support? What kind of logs will you share with the person? What kind of logs do they ask? Right? So that kind of thing. For example, if you are planning to work as architect level, so there will be a couple of scenarios where I will be discussing with you guys like if you want to become an architect, let us say you have more than 10 years of experience. So how do you guide your team? And this will help those freshers or those guys who are coming with, with let us say one, two or three or four years of experience. So they will have an expectation. Like how do they are supposed to get help from their seniors? What kind of approach are they supposed to follow before reaching out to their seniors? Let us say there's some issue comes in and you directly reach out to your seniors. So they have some expectation that at least basic, basic groundwork, basic homework you are supposed to do before reaching out to them. So I will keep every segment in mind while explaining these sort of things. Because see, those guys who are freshers, these will become experienced and those who are already experienced, those will definitely uh, like have uh, their team. So Linux like, like fundamentals, Linux admin and self. Yes, these, these kind of things are like covered here for sure. Linux fundamentals, Linux admin, Linux tuning part. Not completely, but here some kind of parameters are there which are supposed to be known by everyone and cell script is going to be part of this. Yes, guys. So couple of commands, like first of all, there is a cal command we should know. This is just to become familiar with the command line. Let us say you want to see the cal, calendar of let us say 2022. You can print that. For example, you want to print any specific month, let us say Jan of, 20, Jan of 22. You can print that like last year, it was Saturday of 1st of Jan. Let us say you want to print like what will be the date of what will be the calendar of Jan 2024? You can print that here. It will be Monday next year of 1st Jan. We can expect some long holiday next year. Right, guys? And for how long we can see, let us say 2999. Yes, it is working. If I define here, let us say 4999, it is working. See, we can print the calendar of 9999 and so and so forth. We can print 
because this is just mathematical calculation there is some program which is written and we can print any month not not only it can print jan it can print entire year right guys and in order to get more details of it you guys need to explore the particular main pages of cal command itself that will be your job if you face any difficulty let us say you are trying to use any option and you are facing some difficulties i will be there to help but yes these basic commands which are not very frequently used in corporate environment i will not be spending a lot of time on these okay let us say date command date is printing each and everything here like like sunday jan 15 time and everything i will not be telling you today that how to change the time zone but yes there is a file slash uh, vim slash etc this is a file known as time zone okay uh, i'll tell you that with ntp not don't, don't worry so date go for main pages for example hyphen f for example if you have a file using which you want to read the date like you want to print hyphen r like rfc format like this example monday this is this is the particular default format which we have now if you want to print some some custom format guys so for example you want to print a full weekday name copy this go back and type like date plus percentage a it will print only day name go back go to main page go back and for example you want to print only this one like as you and not sunday percentage b and b c date and time like this capital c so whatever you want like this is how it is going to work like r if you want to print like 24 like 12 hours clock or 24 hours clock you can define like this so what do i do here is usually date not man date plus percentage r like this 550 or let us say if i want to print the date completely so percentage f i can print right guys so you can have multiple options available with the date command itself so guys are we clear with the like cat command yes sir pwd yes sir yes sir cal command how to see calendar yes sir yes sir date command yes sir yes pwd we have uh, already seen yes sir okay great now let us go ahead with couple of other commands which are very which are very very important fine so first of all we are going to talk about cd command cd means change directory but what to change first of all we need to understand the directory structure so wherever we are what other kind of files and folders are there we need to run a command known as ls ls for list right if i want to printing uh, print directories in long list like with how to check current time for any country so there will be a particular file which is known as uh, time zone we need we can change that time zone file as and when we want so that will be printing the particular time okay let me tell you so for example there is a file slash etc crony.conf over here we okay vi we can print the particular country time zone time like uh, ntp server here and ntp means network time protocol we can define that server for example for india it is uh, samay1.ntp.org
So guys, this particular is going to be uh, a particular NTP server for us. Samyap1.ntp.org. This is our authentic server for India. System, CTL. That is it. After some time, it will, it will change the time. If that is providing right time or connectivity is there, so it will definitely connect with that. That takes some time. So this is how we can sync with an NTP server. Do not worry, we will create our own NTP server and we will see that how does it work. Don't worry. Okay, so for now we were talking about ls command, ls hyphen l. So let us say we go to some different directory where a couple of files are there, ls hyphen l if we run. So we, we are going to print that, okay, this is a, this is the directory. This is the directory and uh, this is, okay, this is D, D for directory. Read, write, execute, these are the permission set. Right guys, this is directory, these are permission set which we have. And uh, these permission set are for user, which is known as root. The particular second set of permission, like this particular set of permission, like dash, dash, dash. Right now, no permission is allocated. This is for group of the particular file. And last three dash, this particular permission set is for others, like a particular person, for example, easy to dash user. Neither that is owner of the file, nor group of the file, but that particular user comes under other. So no specific permission is assigned to that as well. Okay. Let us say if we go into slash where there are some different directories which I have already told you. So either we can run, see guys, ls hyphen l. We can run this particular command. Or we can run ll command. So ll is a shortcut, or you can call that alias to ls hyphen l command. Whether we run ls hyphen l or ll, the output is going to be same. No difference at all. Okay. One more thing, guys ls hyphen lrth this is the uh, lrth this is the mostly executed command in any linux environment if there is a linux administrator works on linux operating system then this is the command that person prefers to execute every single day multiple times okay so basically what i what i'm trying to say here is that this is the particular uh, command which is execute every single day ls hyphen lrtha now if you tell this command so most of time people are going to ask okay what are these lrtha okay ls hyphen l is good but during interview a person would be interested in knowing that if you are implementing these many switches along with a single command so do you know even the rele relevance of executing these many commands ls hyphen l is good enough what is this R? Guys, read it properly. What is the very first folder which, which is coming in here? ADM, then cache, then it means this comes in sequence in alphabetical order. If I press LR, so this will be reversed. This will mean reverse order, okay? If I define here T, Now, what does it do? So guys, this T will overwrite R. It will be reversed based on the time. Like when the time, when the files are accessed last, it will print, it will print the information in timely sorting. Like when the particular file was sorted last. So based on that particular thing, it will start printing based on the time, time based sorting, not, not reverse order, not sequential, but time-based sorting. Now, if we define here H, so guys, if you see here like 4096, these sort of num numeric values are coming. So if you define here H, H for human readable, like it will be show you that the size of these files in GB, MB, KB, TB, PB, whatever the size is. So it will become human readable. Right, guys? Now, Sorry, if sir. I define here A, a for all. Like there are three files added, like dot updated. 
this is first file here dot dot and dot right guys guys what are these dot dot and dot hidden files okay what will you, what kind of data will be available within this dot blank faisal so if i run a command here ls hyphen l r t h a dot it is going to print the same thing present directory okay and what is the dot dot previous directory so why previous directory is mentioned within this directory why previous directory is mentioned within this directory sir it has may it may have the code so we can it may have the form files sir but even on file has the same thing dot and dot dot okay let us say the beginning of this linux operating system begins with uh, this slash is there anything beyond this slash it will go to previous directory great good to know ls hyphen l t r t r h a so over here even if i type in cd dot dot so where will i go default dot means sir parent directory but i am already inside parent directory so where will i go previous directory but okay. there is no previous directory of this slash you are in the root directory sir. so it will be the home file no this is not home of root root home is this this is root of this home directory of root user but if i am here and i am trying to run this command so where will i go nowhere sir man dot dot even that does not work so let me tell you guys why uh, what is this so guys keep this thing in mind linux operating system it designed in such a way that this is always going this always considers that wherever we are working so either we, we will be working in a directory or there will be a parent directory so this is this becomes an exception in case of plus so wherever we are there is always a parent directory to it so this becomes an exception in case of slash but yes wherever you are there will be one parent directory to it okay what if i do not want to print in order to bring some confusion i can type in lrth capital a this will print everything but not that one a for almost all a for all like small a was printing all right including hidden including dot including dot dot everything was being printed by that but if i want to exclude dot and dot dot while executing this particular command ls hyphen lrth a so i will convert that small a to capital and that will print almost all that will exclude the dot and dot dot and print everything else so even this hidden file is coming okay guys let me tell you one more thing so let us say if we go to any other directory here temp and i run a command touch so guys touch command is used to update the time step of any file or to create any hidden file or maybe to create regular file like abc so guys if we run this particular command dot dot and this dot are coming over here right but if i change it to capital a guys one more x command i have executed touch so this touch command is used to create empty file or to update time stamp of any file are we clear with this 
yes, if someone is going to ask that how do we create a, well, like hidden file we can place a dot before file name that will become hidden if we want to create empty file we can use touch command or if we want to update timestamp of any file then we can use touch command so touch command can be used for multi purpose if i define this capital a here then this will print everything except those dot and dot dot these are hidden directories guys yes okay so tell me one thing like i want to update timestamp of this file same as this particular file Yes, guys. I want to update timestamp of this file, same as this file. Just put the command touch and uh, file name. are these the same so even even without defining the exact timestamp i can take i can tell this touch command to take reference for the timestamp of this particular file and apply on this particular file so even this command we can use guys in order to update timestamp of a file are we clear with this sir one second sir yes please take your yes. time namaste take your time sir if you don't touch uh, touch command uh, just uh, we see that it will update or not pardon uh, that uh, if we run just a touch command with uh, uh, dot abc then because you did not specify like what to what about you i did not specify any time stamp so that has updated the time stamp to current time Okay. So any specific and individual time stamp we can append or we can associate with a particular file system, or with a particular file. Okay. Are we clear with that, guys? Yes. Okay. So now, guys. couple of other commands let us say the uh, the cd command cd is cd is the command to change the directory cd then define the directory name we can go here cd let us say we can go any directory so this is my current working directory i know uh, like uh, you guys may be a little confused or maybe a little new to this environment but right now you need not to talk about that what are the particular directories what you need to focus here is like how do we change it so we can change this directory like this or what we can do here is cd dot dot i can go a directory back what if i need to go to my previous working directory how will i do it cd dot dot no cd dash dot dot will take me directory back see cd dot dot a directory back pwd this is etc sysconfig if i want to go back to etc sysconfig network dash scripts cd dash at any given point in time if i want to go to my root my 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 home directory cd enter or 
CD after that tilled. Tilled means home directory of a user. So guys, what do we call it? There are two things. There are two kinds of paths available in Linux environment. Either it is known as absolute path or it is known as relevant path or you can call that relative path. So anyone who has any idea about what is relative path and what is absolute path? One is from root directory and one is from home uh, present directory. Okay, so what is the difference like home directory and root directory? The complete path from root and present uh, directory only, current directory, as a current directory. Okay, great. Sounds good. So let me tell you guys. So let us say if I'm sitting here and I need to go to some different, like let us say there is a folder created in my home directory. Let us, let me go there. CD and tilde. MKDIR. MKDIR folder is used to create a directory. Let us say data. I'll go inside select data. Then after MKDIR, let us say test. This is directory. I'll go to slash etc. This config network hyphen scripts. So see, I had to define this complete path. So if any path begins with this less, that means we are talking about absolute path. Right guys. But let us say if I want to talk about some relative path, there is a folder inside my home directory. So I will not define like this less, less root slash data. I can define like this inside my home directory. Then test. So I can directly switch from here to this. What is my current working directory, guys? What is my current working directory slash root slash data slash test? Right? Guys, if yes, I sir. want to go back to that same directory slash etc sysconfig network dash scripts. Just put the dash cd uh, hyphen. Now, and now what was my previous work, previous working directory according to this slash root data and test. So isn't this shortcut useful guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. So guys, uh, these kind of shortcuts we are going to discuss about. And one more thing. Uh, the, the trick for the day. Every single day, I will keep on sharing a particular trick with you. So let us say I want to print something. Let us say I executed a command. Let us say LSLS ETC and uh, PASSWD. Now this is the particular command which I have executed this time. But now what next? I want to read the particular text. So what will I do? I will have to define once again ETC PASSWD, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, no, sir. I will not do that. I will press escape button and then fully stop. Escape dot. So escape dot. Escape character, like the very topmost left, left hand side button, then fully stop. If we type in, so this will print last command, last argument on my terminal. This is a shortcut. Let One us say, sir. escape and full stop. Okay. Escape button, down, sir? escape button, then full stop. One by one, not both all together. Like we press shift and Z. Need not to keep the escape button, keep on pressing escape once and then full stop. Now let us say if I want to delete this word, what, how will I do? There are two ways of it. Either I can delete like this, one by one. Or you can type in control plus W. Keep on, keep on pressing control then W. It will remove the entire word from your screen, from your terminal. 
that is control plus w now you realize that you have done some wrong you actually require that word to be available on the screen to type in control plus control keep keep on pressing control button then y it will undo the changes so grace let me tell you buddy so this particular dd commands work only in that case when you are working inside any vim editor dd command does not work here because if i type in dd so that will type in here guys give me a moment Hmm. yes guys so are we clear with this yes sir okay so control w to remove and control plus y to print it back so these are couple of shortcuts for today which i will keep on telling you like on day on day to day routine because see like if you are a good linux administrator you are supposed to be knowing a lot of shortcuts because when you are typing you are playing playing with the keyboard so people who are looking at your screen they should be amazed enough that yes what you have done they should ask you at least once like how you did it so let us say once again let me explain cat etc password is a particular file which i want to open i have written it in order to remove the word control plus w to remove the word from terminal control plus y to reprint the word once again read it now let us say if you want to perform the same operation with some ls hyphen l command and you want to print the same file name again so escape and dot full stop escape plus full stop dot means this dots i'm talking about are we clear with this thing guys yes sir yes sir okay so any question so far guys any question so far guys any question so far no sir no sir no sir any feedback for the session guys yeah really great sir yeah really good sir great sir Yes. Yeah, hi, sir. I have one small doubt. Yeah, please go ahead, Suresh. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the command for uh, terminal? Uh, terminal command. I think uh, how to open the terminal shortcut. So that depends on from tool to tool. So let us say if you want to open new terminal, command N is the option. Or yes, like yes, in, I am using. Or for Git bash, you can you can use Control N. Okay. no actually last one month before i uh, i attend the one interview i interviewer asking one question how to open the command line interface with uh, shortcut key so uh, okay in that particular case it is like f1 f2 f3 these are some virtual terminals within linux operating system okay it, it but is but let me tell you buddy let, let me tell you these options are available only if you have gui installed otherwise this is not practically possible to open multiple terminal from same window or it could be possible that the person might be interested in knowing some kind of tmux tool available tmux so what is that let me tell you there is a tool known as biabu that is obviously uh, some like third party tool b y o b u biabu kind of tool is there so if you install so this will help you let us say you have opened a terminal and now you want to uh, like uh, operate multiple terminal in parallel so for example you can do like this if you if you go if you go for this particular terminal if this kind of tool so you can take remote sessions of multiple servers in parallel and whenever you will click on the particular session so that will become active once again so this might be an expectation from the for like from the person side okay but these tools are not really reliable because to keep a session uh, long active uh, longer than and uh, longer than a certain period of time these kind of things are not recommended from any organization 
So after uh, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes of an ideal time, so people are supposed to log out. And these tools are used only to keep your session active. So this will become an uncompliant situation for you. So, okay, guys, uh, that is it for today. Uh, I hope to see you all with the next session as well. And please do register yourself before next session. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, but thank you. Have a good time. And uh, thank you for sharing feedback as well because your feedback helps me to improve. Thank you. Thank you, okay, thank you so much. Sir. God bless you all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.